morning, everyone. We'll call this meeting to order. Um, I'll ask if there's any disclosure of pecuniary interest. We do have a few, one from myself, item 4.4.3, due to the location of my home and what could be perceived as a conflict, as well as 4.5.1, public works accounts, checks 25457 and 25501, as they pertain to a family member. Councillor Kinney, 4.4.3, as he is a resident in the area. And Deputy Mayor Bray, 3.5.1, as it pertains to her business. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone this morning, as well as uh, we have members of the public uh, joining us for today's Zoom meeting. This is our first coordinated committee since um, COVID began, and uh, we'll be passing the chair off for the different sections of coordinated committee. Uh, before we do that, I, we do have a special guest here today with us, MP Terry Dowdle. And I just wanted to take a minute to uh, thank Terry for popping in to see me last week and we had a catch up and uh, I'm really happy that you're here today to update council as well as uh, the Soggy Beach residents. Uh, and with that, I will pass it over to Councillor Belange to chair the rest of this section. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Bifolci. Uh I guess, uh, uh, welcome Terry. And uh, I, I believe uh, under the deputations and presentations, you will lead off. And then uh, when you're completed, we'll uh, just uh, field any uh, questions. So the floor is yours, sir. Thank you. Dean, I don't know if they're hearing me. Terry, yes, Terry you... could you please unmute? I think I... No, I, I'm, I'm not on mute. Is Terry on mute? Correct. Terry is on, on mute. We're going to ask him to unmute right now. There we go. Okay. I don't know if Terry uh, heard that. Uh, uh, Terry, you're the uh, first presentation, so welcome. And uh, uh, once you've uh, completed your update, we'll just uh, ask uh, the participants if there's any questions. And I, I believe we uh, will then follow on with uh, a, a presentation that I'll turn over to Sylvia Bray. So the floor is yours, Terry. Um, sorry, we're unable to hear you, Terry. Maybe check your audio in the uh, left. Left. Let me just start my video. Yeah, I got my I got my thing they, here. We got you, you now. Yes, okay, we yeah. can hear you now. Yeah, okay. I do. I do. Uh, probably about five hours of Zoom a day now, unfortunately. Uh, so it's uh, you get zoomed out after a while. But uh, Councillor Bonge, thank you very much for uh, for allowing me this time. And the mayor and, and all the council, I, I um. Uh, really, really appreciate it. I, I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you. I had an opportunity, like the mayor has spoken, uh, to speak uh, last week with uh, the mayor and, and George as well, um, to get an update of, I guess, where Wasaga Beach is at this moment in time. And, and I think the good news out of it, depending on the municipality, um, you guys, uh, I guess, knew what was coming and acted rather quickly. And, and for that, um, I don't think that the losses are quite as great as, as some of the other communities, and uh, I think that's fantastic. So um, we've, we've been fortunate in that regard. So I'm going to just give a quick update. I want to thank George. George told me I'm allowed two hours, so um, I want to thank you, George. It's awfully nice of you. Uh, but anyway, I'll just give you a quick update of where, where we're at and what's happened from the federal perspective and, and how it pertains to the beach. Um, basically, what happened when COVID broke, probably the first two to three weeks, um, we dealt specifically for the most part uh, with people that were trying to get back to Canada, to, trying to get, get back, whether it was their parents, whether it was students, and uh, quite frankly, a lot of them were from the beach. Um, so we had to help them uh, find ways to get back here in Canada. In fact, one guy was a musician on a boat and he took a long time to get back. I don't know if anyone followed, but he's from Osaka Beach as well. So his wife was quite concerned. So that was that was the initial, initial part, as well as individuals that uh, were, we're worried about about the income so uh, I, i'm going to give kudos to the the government that they got that out fairly quickly they got the serb out uh, to everybody so i think that from that perspective initially was was uh, well executed um and then and then basically it moved into um businesses and and that's probably been the largest part um and and the biggest concern and and lots of calls definitely from the beach as well how it pertains to them so the government outlined uh, basically three three items they thought would help businesses and, and the first one that they uh, put out was the emergency wage subsidy and uh, part of the problem with that when it was arranged it was a good idea again 
um, but they started with 10 percent and uh, we suggested 75 as well as the parliamentary budget officer um, from the perspective that in order to keep those uh, people working those in industries restaurants uh, you name it tourist uh, locations they needed it more than 10 percent so part of the problem was they would they they eventually listened which was good and, and they got to the 75 but at that time people had already been let go and uh, it, it created a little bit of a problem for a lot of the businesses to uh, even now a lot of the calls are they're not uh, they're not coming back yet to those uh, those industries tourism spots whatever it may be um, at this time so that's that was a little bit of a, a drop of the ball um, they did work as well I think most people took advantage of um, if they could um, and it was changed and evolved as well was the emergency bank um, account which is a forty thousand dollar loan to businesses and uh, if they pay it back within the two years they they actually have to pay thirty thousand so um, there again we worked the uh, ceiling the ceiling was uh, too low uh, how much uh, you were paying out in wages and and, uh, and the bottom was at uh, forty thousand so they worked together with that as well um, and, and then the last one which has been probably the biggest issue and the one I probably hear the most about now at this particular moment is is the um, the one that we worked in conjunction with the province, which was a commercial rent uh, uh, help that we were going to help out with everyone, 50% from the federal and provincial government, 25% uh, from the actual landlord, and 25% uh, from, from the tenant. And uh, the uptake on that's been very, very low. So the CERB, we've had eight over 8 million of, of 37 million people have uh, taken the CERB so far. So... Um, we are a little bit concerned about that number and how it's going to play out, uh, um, but only 16,000 have taken advantage of the rent. So one of my largest calls are a lot of tenants that just aren't getting that help. So we've uh, been trying to push to allow hopefully businesses um, to apply and uh, just get the 50% from the government as well, because uh, a lot of them don't think they're going to uh, survive or carry on. So um, that's one issue that we've been pushing uh, for a long time and we don't know it's getting near the summer so I don't know how that's going to necessarily go and then the other issue that we've heard a lot from and this pertains a lot of calls as well um, to Wasaga Beach with the demographics for sure it's been very high is uh, when it all began as seniors so seniors um, whether it's their old age security or, or you know their GIS uh, guaranteed income um, already are at the low end of the scale so they were wondering how we were going to help them during this crisis as there's more expenses uh, for them to help get people to get their groceries, things of that nature. Um, so we did, or the Liberal government did announce um, a subsidy. Um, they're not necessarily extremely happy with that amount, um, and probably rightfully so, but uh, they did an announcement, but all the details aren't there yet. So we're getting lots of phone calls from seniors, and uh, basically it's going to be a separate check. They're going to get a one-time uh, check for $300 and then if you get the uh, GIC you are going to get uh, an extra $200 but it will be a separate check it won't be part of the regular check that you would get each and every month and it is supposed to be out around the second week of July so that's another one of the things that uh, we have moving forward so uh, those have been sort of the things that we've dealt with um, to this point with with residents uh, I would say moving forward we've been pushing quite hard for where do we go from here and uh, what exactly are we going to do? I brought up before in the House of Commons, uh, municipalities and the need that they have. I know that you work on, I come from municipal background, as you know, uh, you work on nine cents on the dollar and uh, it's pretty hard with the demands that you have um, to, to really, to grow your, your municipality without that assistance from the federal government. So there are concerns that uh, when we get through this, where will the federal government be? Um, you know, there's a lot of discussion. It's, it's, are, are they going to uh, support um, and, and do an infrastructure injection? Uh, my thoughts are, it's just me, I, th I think my, my gut feeling is I think they will. I think they're going to realize that uh, it's important because we are going to lose uh, quite a few jobs. Um, the unemployment rate is going to be um, higher after this pandemic. So I, my belief is it's probably one of those areas that they'll probably get to. I can tell you we've questioned, uh, I know that when they were got into government, I'm not bashing here, but uh, it was $186 billion in infrastructure funding uh, over, over a 12-year period. And basically we've been asking, it's, it's basically they're supposed to spend around $11 billion a year. They're only spending, they're only accounting for six. So there's $5 billion that uh, we're trying to find out where it's going um, each year because 
we know and I know for you I want to congratulate you as well I know you've uh, decided as a council to um, put in a library and, and a new rec center which I think is fantastic but in order to do that um, I believe some of that money needs to come from the other levels of government because uh, those projects are extremely large to take on um, certainly uh, economical boost uh, for the area and I I think we should be I honestly believe we need to be a partner in that um, we are pushing that uh, coming out of this pandemic we need to inject money uh, probably more than ever here in Canada uh, whether it's Canadian companies um, we're finding that uh, you know when this pandemic hit we were basically more reliable uh, ourselves we needed to uh, do that we've learned from PPEs things of that nature that we need to be a little more independent because this these type of things could happen again so we are going to continue to push definitely for uh, for injections monies uh, to come into our writings and uh, the other thing I would like to say that I think you know in analyzing after the fact or moving forward if there was one thing that I think that all levels could have done better um, and, and you know our level for sure is is knowing that these uh, type of uh, events can happen is that we should have a more coordinated approach uh, from we have four levels here from all four levels because I can tell you um, the confusion out there amongst the residents as to who who does what who funds what some of us overlapped some of us helped out in certain ways somebody gave taxes somebody at the end of the day as we know and it's probably overused there is one taxpayer and I think we could have set up and coordinated and going forward I hope that uh, all the levels of government get together because even even myself I would wonder what is the provincial government doing to help perhaps this business what are they going to help the seniors are they giving a discount on this so the communication wasn't that great and that's what I've heard uh, on a lot of my zoom videos I had a, a business video the other day and Jim Wilson was on as well and and there's a lot of confusion certainly from uh, the provincial perspective as to um, what 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 is opening and what will these businesses um, have to do and I think that has been a big big concern and I, I know for sure in, in your uh, in your town it would be because uh, being a tourist town um, what do they need to do to continue as a business um, but the communication I think has probably been kind of kind of weak it could have been a lot better so I am hoping through it all we we should learn from every experience we have uh, I think that uh, I'm going to push for that that we have a better better circle of communication and I think it would help uh, all of us so um, those are basically what we went through and like I said we're going to continue hopefully to push um, for infrastructure spend spending and uh, we know I know uh, how important tourism and uh, you know is in your town and I also know that uh, the town stands alone uh, without the tourists um, that that's a strong municipality and, and certainly uh, would would love to be part of hopefully the uh, the arena and the library expansion in your in your town so thank you if you got any questions i, I will uh, let you know ahead of time i have to leave at about 9 30 because uh, i have my uh my caucus meeting for the conservatives this morning okay terry uh thank you very much for the update and uh, uh I, before i open it up for questions i just want to turn it back over to uh, mayor bifolci if uh, she has any comments uh Thank you, Councillor Belanger. No, um, like I said, uh, Terry and I had a good visit last week and I, I thought it was important that he come and uh, speak with council and, and the community. And uh, I would definitely agree, communication uh, moving forward would uh, be beneficial. We won't get into uh, our situation with uh, the province or the beach right now, but uh, communication would be uh, much better moving forward. So thank you again for being here today. Okay, so we'll, uh, if you uh, have a question, just hold up your speak card. Okay, uh, I think that's Councillor Wells. Uh, his name is uh, not showing up, but go ahead. Sorry, I was having trouble getting unmuted there. Sorry about that. Um, I Just on a personal note, uh, I, I just want to acknowledge and recognize uh, I, I'm involved in another organization uh, on a board of directors, and uh, we were uh, very severely uh, affected uh, by the travel uh, restrictions. Um, the organization I'm involved with had a number of individuals who were overseas, and uh, I just want to acknowledge and thank uh, Terry and his staff uh, for helping.
helping us out and uh, getting engaged and uh, getting all of those people home. So thanks, Terry. Okay, anything else? Councillor Foster, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Councillor Belanger. Uh, thanks for bringing us back up to date here, Terry, on stuff. Uh, you were talking, there are two areas I wanna just touch on briefly. Um, you were talking about how things are going to um, evolve kind of after for the economy. And, uh, you know, your, your hope is that they will uh, lead in infrastructure. And, and the way I look at it is there's only two options. You can either lead or you can follow. And the government has the ability um, to, to create infrastructure, which creates immediate jobs puts money back into the economy that can then cycle through. And we all know every dollar earned, uh, spent is $7 later on. Uh, so, you know, when it comes to the rebooting, it's absolutely critical that the upper tiers of government and specifically the federal, but both um, don't be shy. They haven't been shy on spending on anything, but this is one that, that you know, by getting people back to work in construction and roads and things like that, it's, it's an immediate response. So, so I, I want you to, you know, follow on that um, yeah. as much as possible. I know you will, thank you. The other part is, and as the mayor said, is the communication. And this has been a unique situation, this COVID, because we had communication early on, you know, to do this and don't do that. And the only thing that's really stayed consistent is, is wash your hands, social distance, but even wear a mask wasn't a big deal at the beginning, but it's become. So we, we talk and, and the mayor might have suggested it, discussions about the, the beach area, but we are making decisions at the municipal level based on information that's provided from the province and from the federal government. And that stuff is a, it's a, a moving target. So we, 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 you know, we kind of throw the dart and, and it's heading towards the board and the board moves over three inches and, and we miss the board. Well, we don't miss the board, but I mean, it doesn't get the effect we want. So that communication piece from the, the third level of government down is absolutely critical uh, to us. And sometimes we make decisions based on what we hear from above and then it changes two days later or even a day later. And it does lead to a certain amount of frustration. So I just wanted to share that but thank you for uh, putting yourself out there for us. Thank you, David. Is there anyone else? Okay, Ter Terry, uh, thank you very much for the update. And uh, I'll speak for myself. I believe a, a lot of people and seeing the response from our province and from Canada, uh, I'm, I'm very proud of, uh, of what we've done, a lot of a lot of the decisions were uh, very challenging, both financially and as from an implementation perspective. And this is an unprecedented time. I agree with you. We'll learn from this. I think we'll come out the other side better. But uh, when you see uh, what's happened in many areas of the world, and we haven't talked yet about loss of life, uh, I believe the way we've handled this is we've really uh, been able to. Uh, minimize uh, the the amount of uh, health concerns for our population and of course we're very proud of all of our residents for their social distancing but uh, and just finally uh, thank you for going to bat for us on the infrastructure we're talking about that later today and it is a large sum of money it's something that we really need and uh, we're glad we can count on you to uh, uh, bring home some uh, money to this riding. So thank you very much. Thank, thank, thank you, Joe. And, and once again, thanks for having me on. If, if any of the uh, residents are on here, uh, feel free to reach out to my office if you have any concerns. Uh, I'll, I'll just give the phone number quick. It's 705 44 uh, four, 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 I'm getting those eyes now on this one. 5557. Five, 5557. Five, that's my calling one office. So if you want to reach out, uh, that's fantastic. Give us a call if we can help in any way. And uh, once again, congratulations to you as well. I know that uh, through this, it's been a, a difficult time for everyone. And uh, you've certainly saw what was coming. 
and and reacted uh, i believe uh, rather quickly and uh, realized that we need to uh, to move forward so thank you very much for allowing me the time and i look forward to uh, seeing you all in person in the future thanks again terry uh, I'm now going to turn the meeting over to Councillor Bray. Uh, we have a public meeting scheduled and uh, we Sunshine Sorry. Village. Councillor Belanger. Sorry, we just have a motion to accept the update from MP Dowdle. Oh, okay. Yes, I, I see that. My apologies. So, uh, uh, can we have a for, uh, motion and a seconder? Okay, I believe uh, Councillor Wells and uh, Councillor Foster. And that the Community Service Section of Coordinated Committee received the update from MP Terry Doddle for information. All those in favor? Carried unanimously. Uh, I think I was on mute. That was carried unanimously. Uh, did, did you hear the motion or was I on mute? Okay. We heard it past the door. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, so I'll now turn it over to Sylvia Bray to uh, chair the uh, presentation on Sunshine Village. Uh, thank you, Councillor Belanger. So this uh, will be our public meeting about a proposed amendment to the Town of Wasaga Beach Official Plan, Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw 2003-60, as amended and proposed, it's a draft plan of subdivision. Concession 9, Lot 25, Plan 51R20542, Part 1 part and 4, and municipally described as 602, 612, 630, and 646 River Road West, 1590245 Ontario, Inc., and 2661622 Ontario Inc. Notice of public meeting was mailed to property owners within 120 meters of the proposed development on May the 14th. It was posted on the property using three signs along each road frontage on May the 19th and circulated to all agencies, service providers and school boards by email as prescribed in the Planning Act. This provided 20 days of notice for the public meeting. And this meeting is therefore properly constituted as required by the Planning Act. Purpose and effect of the proposed official plan amendment, zoning bylaw amendment, and draft plan of subdivision would enable the development of the subject lands with 116 townhouses and a four story, 30 unit residential apartment building while retaining land along River Road West for future commercial use. As a result of the circulation of the notice of public meeting, the following written comments were received Letters of support, none. Letters of no objection, Bell Canada. Rogers, Hydro One, Town Engineering Department, the County of Simcoe, the Simcoe County District School Board. Letters of concern, one from John Clarabu. Letters of objection, none. Miss Nolan, have we received any further letters or correspondence in regard to this application? Uh, yes, we have received another letter from uh, a local resident and that was uh, Rita Stock. Thank you. Town planning staff will now make a brief presentation and will provide further details with respect to the proposed official plan and zoning bylaw amendments and the draft plan of subdivision. Over to you, Julie. Okay. Okay, so uh, welcome everyone. Um, I'm hosting uh, a virtual public meeting on the applications for uh, official plan amendment, draft plan of subdivision, and zoning bylaw amendment. Uh, the purpose of this meeting is to introduce the applications on behalf of the applicant. Uh, I'm going to do an overview of the subject lands and the proposed development and provide a summary of the comments received to date and then provide uh, next steps and take any questions uh, and provide my contact at the end so that if anybody does have extra, um, uh, extra questions or uh, any kind of comments that they would like to, to submit, they can still do that. So public meeting is required under the Planning Act. 
and it's a way for the public to take part, provide submissions, hear from the consultant, hear from the planning staff uh, as to what the applications are about. Uh, so it provides an opportunity for everyone if uh, in the future they want to appeal the application, it can help pr preserve those appeal rights if they do submit uh, an oral submission today. Um, so the applications are for official plan amendment, a draft plan of subdivision, and a zoning bylaw amendment submitted on behalf of two Ontario companies uh, back in February 2020. So the lands are municipally described as 602, 612, 630, and 646 River Road West, and they are over top of the existing Sunshine Campground. So there's approximately 61.8 meters of frontage along River Road West, and approximately 91.6 meters of frontage along Zoo Park Road. Uh, the entire parcel is approximately 3.4 hectares. Uh, the town received a complete application on March 27th, 2020, and the notice of public meeting uh, was issued on May 14th, 2020. So we had posted some signs. You can see there on the map where the signs were posted. Sorry, Julie, can I just have you to start the, the slideshow? If Is it not? Uh... It's not started. We just see the... Um, the entire oh. presentation, but if you just want to hit slideshow and start through your slides. Um, okay, so I had done that. Um, let me just see. Because um, it's moving on my screen, sorry. It's, uh, I don't know why it wouldn't be moving on your screen. Hmm. Oh, there we go. So we're on slide six right now. I don't know if you wanted to back up or at all. But... Uh, sure. So can everyone see my yes. slides? We can see now, thank you. Okay, sorry about that, I didn't know. Um, okay, so this just describes where the properties are. Um, this is what I was speaking to in terms of the subject lands. So you can see it's over top of the sunshine Sunshine Campground. Um, there's a couple commercial properties along River Road West, uh, as well as the commercial property that includes the campground. So uh, moving on, you can see I've provided a map as to where the signs were posted for the uh, public meeting and notice of complete application was issued March 27th and a public meeting notice was mailed out and posted on a sign on May 14th. So we've provided uh, more than 20 days notice uh, for this public meeting. Uh, so uh, the current official plan designation is district commercial. So you can see that red is uh, all the commercial lands that are adjacent to the subject property. And what the applicant is proposing is to change that official plan amendment, or sorry, change the designation of the official plan to residential. But they do want to keep one small parcel as commercial and keep that as part of the entire plan of subdivision. So they want to redesignate those lands to residential. And by doing that, they will also need to rezone the lands uh, from district commercial to type three residential with a special exception and type four residential. Uh, those will help to uh, match the official plan amendment. So you can see here, they're proposing in green uh, type three, which will be townhouses. And then the type four is a higher density zone where they're proposing a an apartment that will be 30 units. So the special exception means that the zone won't exactly match the R3 zone. It means that they will have a slight deviation from the permitted zoning. Some of those deviations from the R3 zone include reducing the lot area from 210 square meters to 140 square meters. Uh, 
uh, reducing the minimum front yard depth from six meters to 4.5 meters and reducing the minimum interior side yard from six meters to 1.5 meters, uh, reducing the minimum width per unit, uh, seven meters to six meters. Uh, they want to also include tandem parking as a permitted use, and they want to reduce the minimum distance that a driveway could be away from an intersection from nine meters down to uh, seven meters. So you can see here, uh, this is the proposed draft plan of subdivision. Uh, in the orange uh, to the right is the apartment and over to the left is the future commercial. Uh, above that in the yellow and green is the proposed uh, townhouses. So it's right now they're proposing 116 townhouse units and 30 apartment units. Uh, the comments to date, uh, we haven't had any, uh, any opposition. Um, we have had the County of Simcoe speak to you know, some uh, conditions that might be involved in the draft plan of subdivision, as well as uh, garbage pickup for uh, the entire subdivision. Uh, Hydro One, Bell Canada, Rogers, and Simcoe County District School Board uh, have no concerns and they have submitted some proposed uh, draft plan conditions. Should, should an approval come forward. So again, this meeting is to allow for people to ask questions. It's uh, regulated and required under the Planning Act. And uh, I'd like to remind everyone that staff have not completed a full detailed review and council is not making a decision today. So this is purely to take comments uh, have an open discussion about the proposal and council will be uh, provided a recommendation report in the future. If anybody would like to provide further comments in writing, they can do so by emailing myself at planner3 at wasagabeach.com. And the next steps will be reviewing the application in further detail uh, looking over the comments and then rolling that up into a recommendation report to uh, the development services, the development service section of coordinated committee and then it will move on to council for a decision. So thank you, Cou uh, Councillor Bray. I'm going to, um, you know, hand the mic back over to you and uh, perhaps we could take some questions. Thank you, Julie. Uh, the property owner and applicants consulting planner, Vanessa Simpson, of Innovative Planning Solutions are in attendance. Does the applicant or consultant wish to provide any further details with respect to the proposed development? Unfortunately, I can't. Hi, I think, hi, Councillor. Uh, this is Vanessa Simpson from Innovative Planning. I think I'll, I'll highlight just a few other items um, before we move to some questions, and I'm here to, to answer any questions that um, council or, or members of the public may have um, regarding the project. So as, as Julie mentioned, I'll kind of just elaborate on a few of the items. The project will be um, a freehold common elements condo. Um, the townhouses will be freehold, so the future owners uh, would own the townhouse and the land that their, their dwelling sits on. And then the common elements would essentially be the road, the park, um, sidewalks, um, any kind of visitor parking and whatnot that is throughout the site plan. And the apartment building would also be part of that, that same condo development. Um, as mentioned, it would be 116 townhouse units and 30 apartment dwelling units. At this time, the townhouses are likely to be uh, a for sale at market value uh, dwelling. And the apartments um, might be a condo for sale at, at market price or, or rental. Um, we are discussing the different options with the applicant right now to kind of explore what market conditions are in the area and um, how things have changed with COVID and what kind of it all might look like moving forward. 
I think that that summarizes a lot of a lot of the comments. Um, and one thing I will mention, obviously, we still are going to be moving through site plan and detailed design with the town. And that's really when we'll get down to the architectural details and what the dwellings and apartment building uh, may look like and how they relate architecturally to uh, the develop other developments um, within the Sega Beach and you know how, how they all just kind of um, coordinate and really provide a complementary design features uh, to the area as it is a feature um, site kind of coming into the, the downtown area of the Sega Beach. So we are very cognitive of uh, you know the development uh, blending in with the surrounding area. Uh, we do we do anticipate. I know we had some comments regarding trees on the property, and we do anticipate to try to retain as many of the healthy trees as possible, especially those that are boundary trees against uh, property lines. The intent is always to retain as many trees as possible, as long as their health um, is. Is in, in good shape, um, and we've provided sufficient setbacks uh, with the dwellings along the property lines to accommodate those trees and the drip lines that are existing. Um, I think I think that summarizes a few comments that I wanted to add. And if um, if there's any questions that I can answer, I'm I'm more than more than willing to do that. Thank you, Vanessa. Uh, there are some local residents attending today's virtual public meeting that have registered in advance to make oral submissions. The clerk will read through the list of members of the public to provide them with an opportunity to make oral comments with respect to the proposed development. When your name is called, please direct your comments to the meeting chair. Thank you, everybody. Um, and I'd ask if uh, we have any consultants or, or any uh, public members that can share their video while they're speaking. It helps for our Council to uh, see and uh, so I'm first person I'm going to go to is Clark Wilson. Um, I see you here, and I'll ask you to um, unmute and start your video, and you may make your comments. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you, yes, Clark. Sir. Are you able to un uh, share your video? Okay, hang on just one second, and we'll try that too. There you are. Okay. Hello. Uh, I live on Metal Lane, and uh, the properties along Metal Lane that are adjacent to, which was Sunshine Park, uh, there's a large fence there dividing it from the park. Of course, there's a lot of trees, and the uh, young lady that was just speaking was saying that uh, they're going to save as many healthy trees as possible. Um, the question being, who makes the decision what's healthy? <laughs> And uh, would the city be, a town be involved in that decision? And how many? Uh, that's one question. The other question is that one of the concerns are that the townhouses that are going along Meadow Lane and also along Clover, are they three-story townhouses or two-story? Anybody hear that? Thank you. Yeah. We, we did hear you. If I could have Vanessa, please show your video and then uh, you can respond if that's... There you go. It's working. <laughs> um, yeah, so and our, so for Madame Chair, um, the first uh, the first question, so about the trees, um, an Arbor report has been prepared in, in, um, in relation to this submission, the proposed submission, and has been submitted with the application so that has been or will be reviewed by the the town and any comments that they may have um, or concerns about the report that has been done will be sent back to us and we will work with the town to address those concerns um, and then the second question regarding the height of the dwellings we are not asking for increased height so the height permit is 12 meters and at this time um, the applicant is unsure if if that would look like a, a two-story uh, two dwelling or a three-story dwelling. Um, so, I, unfortunately, we, we can't make that, that uh, firm, firm. Okay, I guess the point, concern... But it would, it would be one of the other. Certainly. Okay, I guess the concern would be that 
people, your clearance is what, 4.5 meters to the fence line? From the rear of the building? Sir, in, in, which lo in which location, sorry? Along Meadow Lane and along Clover, the townhouses, what would be the clearance to the fence line? I thought someone said, four, Julie said 4.5 meters. They would be, um, I believe, locations, it's at least seven meters. It's 7.6. Sorry, I'm, I, uh, I, I pulled this up in front of me. So the, the rear yard depth is not going to change from what the zone would permit, and that is 7.6 meters. 7.6. Okay, I guess the concern was that people uh, that are living there, and don't forget, we're all retirees, and they've been there. Those townhouses have been, or the Metal Lane have been there about 12 years. Uh, their concern is that they're going to have a three-story apartment with people looking down into their backyard and without any tree protection. So. Yes, that, that, that's acknowledged. I, I, um, we'll definitely take into consideration as we continue to review the design. And um, I think that the eight, like the seven to eight meters rear yards we've provided would accommodate for for the existing trees or for future planting as well. Okay. In that case, then it would just uh, be great to find out uh, before the final decision is made. Uh, and would it be possible for some of the people that live along and are going to be definitely affected by the height of the buildings and the trees, could they be involved in the discussion in any way? So uh, I'm just going to jump in here because uh, I think I think this is the start of the discussion. Uh, having people, you know, provide their comments, uh, concerns, or solutions, uh, you can do that now today, or you can also write a letter and provide comments for us to discuss as well. So um, if you want to write those into me, and you can also provide your name if you would like future updates, if there's future submissions, uh, you can do that as well. Um, just keep in mind today is not the final decision and this is more of how the land will be divvied up and how the zone will take place. The site plan and more detailed design work will happen later down the road. So this is to divide the land into parcels that would be uh, individually conveyable and the actual detailed design and what that looks like will go through site plan at a later date. Okay, great. And one last comment. The only way uh, in our area now, I'm probably 200 meters away from the fence line. Uh, the only way we found out about it is somebody stumbled across the sign on the side of the fence, and then we shared, they shared it with everybody because we have an internal Facebook page. Uh, I know the 120 meters may be the agreed upon distance, but it definitely affects all the people in this area. So I think that could be, uh, it is definitely a concern that we did not find out until somebody stumbled across the sign. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, thank welcome. you for your comments. Thank you very much. I'll leave you now. Thank you. Madam Clerk, were there more members of the public? Thank you, Deputy Mayor Bray. Yes, um, we have a few more members. Um, the next person I'm going to go to is uh, Rita Stock, um, and she is joining by phone and computer. Um, because um, she has an uh, issue with sound on her computer. So I see that she is unmuted here and I'm going to ask her to start her video. So Rita, um, are you there? Yes, I am. Here we go. Okay, can you see me? We can. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, I have got about 10 questions and some of them have been already answered and then I do have some concerns and some comments that I'd like to make. Um, and my first question was, um, if, the, if today would, there was gonna be a decision, but I understand there's no decision made today, which is great. Um, number two, I, I'm asking if there will be a second public meeting given the current circumstances with COVID-19 and the fact that the proposed rezoning and development affects seniors that do not have the technology for, for Zoom. So that's why I was wondering if there would be a second meeting. Um, question number three, um, is the applicant to change, 
to change the zoning, I should say the application to change the zoning for the current owner, uh, John Cretozzi, is it to sell the property to a developer or is he himself planning to keep the land and hire a contractor? Is that a question that could be answered today? Hi, Drew Mathair. I can I can answer those questions regarding our, um, well, I can't really answer fully, but I've had discussions with John and the, the current owner about whether he will be selling the land. Sorry, I apologize for my two-year-old. <laughs> um, <Okay. laughs> um, we've had discussions with the, the applicant and the current owner about whether he will be uh, doing the building self or selling land. He's exploring actually the options, um, which is going to be an investor for him to take on. Um, so at the time, there's not a decision, but if that if that changes and he comes with uh, a decision of which direction he wants to go, we definitely pass that to the town they can share it application. Okay, thank you. My next qu my next question is, what is the planned completion date for this subdivision? To your chair, uh, we don't have a date for that yet. It would depend on how long this process takes, um, and and quickly, and, and especially the current COVID nineteen situation um, timeline in the past been extended. We've met through other projects. So the process we're working through now, um, and Julie, please correct me if I'm wrong, could take me six months um, before we would see an approval, maybe sooner. Just depends on how quickly we kind of um, can move forward. And then we would still have to go through detailed design. And detailed design would essentially take probably a, about a year um, to complete. So likely I, I wouldn't see any building until maybe Spring of 2022, potentially. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the next question I have is, will this rezoning make the property, this rezoning to, of the property to res residential, does this mean it would make it eligible for short-term rentals? Um, it, the short-term rental isn't a permitted use in the zone, so um, you know whether that happens, there are uh, measures in place that we can take at that time, but uh, it is not a permitted use outright. Okay, so, but if someone purchases the townhouse and uh, they get a business thing, would, uh, apply for a business, would they then be able to have short-term rentals or Airbnb. I'm just not sure of the bylaws on all that totally, but I was just wondering if that would come into play. Uh, that would determine. That would be determined on, uh, I guess, the circumstances in the person living there and what kind of application they would submit. So uh, I, I can't really answer that at this time because the you know they're not really built. Uh, we can't prevent people from. Uh, purchasing and using them as they wish, uh, but I think uh, it, it could potentially be something that's considered, but I, I don't think at this time um, that that would be a, a possibility to consider. Okay. All right. My next question was, um, as per the subdivision plan, I was asking whether the units would be for sale or for rent, but that's already been answered that townhouses would be sold and apartments. I think they're still looking at whether it be sale as condos or rental. So we'll just wait upon that. Um, my next question would be if the units um, are for rent, um, will it be based on income um, or market value? I'm pretty sure that has been answered already too. The sale will be at market value. Rent, I'm pretty sure would be, mar I think it was said it would be market value. Is that correct? I believe so. Okay, thank you. Um, now, the, in the proposed plan, 
um, of rezoning, it's showing that there is a commercial area still, and I want to know why and what was the intent for this commercial parcel of land. Through Madam Chair, I can address that, that question. Um, commercial parcel that is being retained as commercial will refer to mutual commercial, future commercial use. And that piece of land is along uh, River Road West. And it's adjacent to other parcels that are also commercial right now. And it seemed as appropriate to keep that, that piece commercial so that whole kind of block um, maintains its commercial viability and or is potentially in the future redeveloped um, by amalgamating parcels together. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and my question is, is there a height or a distance restriction of building when the buildings surround a senior lifestyle community? And I believe that's kind of been answered, but there isn't an exception for type of community it's being built around. Uh, yes, through Madam Chair, um, the there are no uh, particular provisions with respect to senior communities. Uh, the zoning provisions are uh, what exist, and uh, that that would have to you'd have to look at the zoning um, for that. And I think I've covered over what the exceptions uh, would be already. So you can find that in the in the slides. Okay, great, thank you. And um, my last question was, um, before I actually make a closing comment, um, the current fences that are behind the homes on Meadow Lane and Clover between Sunshine Park, will they be, will, will they be replaced with a higher fence due to the height of the proposed townhouse and apartment complex? Uh, so I think that that uh, could be taken as a form of comment because I don't think that we have gotten into that detailed uh, part of the plan yet and that will be fleshed out in the site plan uh, submission. So if you could provide that as a comment if you would like it to be increased or not. Okay, that would be great. Thanks. Um, okay, we and it's also been noted and in your um, your. Uh, uh, sorry, um, I, I'm asking that uh, there was a note, notes in there of alerts of um, asking for zoning variances, and my concern was based on the variance. If they're asking for a width change, that increases the number of units to be in, and my largest concern would be um, of this development would be the height level and the number of units requested because I think it will create you know a visual view into the homes and yards of the seniors one level bungalow townhomes. Um, it'll block the sunlight to the yards and the homes of the senior residents and lack of sun will cause damage to the senior residents roof. Um, the units uh, will overtower and look like a bunker or blockade style of living uh, looking more like an extension of the GTA rather than Small, uh, small town, hometown living. Uh, with the height and the future variances request to the seven meter width to the six meter creates an overcrowding and will def definitely change the feel of our lifestyle community living. Um, visually, not sure how it w would look um, to the community since it'll be in close proximity to the road Plus, I think it'd be an eyesore alongside of our future library arena. Um, then, in closing, I'd like to say that I believe in making the I believe in making it a residential with adjustments to the proposed plan would be a great idea. And I would like to ask and recommend the following. And I'm sure some of this decision has been made: a delay in the decision for the town and for John Cretosi to give Wasaga Meadow homeowners residents further time to discuss and gather more information due to the COVID-19 social distancing and gathering. Uh, we'd like John, along with the town, to hold a meeting with Wasega Meadows homeowners as an information sharing in regards to the Arborist reports, planning justification reports, the traffic study, et cetera. Um, set up a second public meeting to address any additional concerns 
after a meeting with the Wasega Meadow homeowners. Um, and I think that more than a two-story home and apartment building um, would not give us the proper look of the town. Um, and based on the west end of the town is an entrance into Wasega Beach and having a tall residential apartment building and townhomes so close to the main road, which is River Road West, will look more like an extension to the GTA and not give us a skyline flow through to the town, Main Street and beaches. And I would like to thank you all for the time and I hope that you will give my consideration and concerns um, and recommendations in your thoughts and decisions. Thank you again. Thank you, Rita. Thank you, Rita. Um, I'll get you to um, leave the meeting at this point and you can continue watching online. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, um, and the next person we have on the list to speak is uh, Mildred and Jim. So I'll get you to unmute yourselves and show your video. Here we go. I think you're still on mute, Mildred and Jim, if you can, um, bottom left-hand corner, there you are. Okay. Good morning. <clears throat> My name is Mildred Lamb and with my partner Jim Park here and we have been residents of Wasega Meadows since conception 13 years ago. Uh, needless to say over all over those years uh, we've had a lot of unhappy moments with Sunshine Park. Uh, so I have to say I am excited, really excited about this new project and and I hope uh, a proposal is made to go ahead with it. Uh, I guess I'm more concerned or, or about me personally or us personally living here so I am um, and I'm sure there are most of with say the meadows where we live I'm sure are happy to have something there rather than the campground. So I'm excited about it, uh, and I hope it will be accepted and it will go ahead. Um, a lot of my questions and concerns have already been made and questions answered, so I have, I'm not going to repeat them. I, did, I have gotten a lot of information from there. Um, and most of all, I guess, or very high on the scale, is what this will do for our town. Uh, I don't have to name the positive things that will happen, and I'm sure they will outweigh any negative things that may occur. So um, I'm happy to be part of this meeting this morning. It's something new for us, and uh, and I wish the developer luck and, uh, and the town in making their decisions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mildred and Jim. Um, next on our list, I'm going to ask you to, um, now that you're done, we'll leave the meeting and you can continue watching online. Um, and thank you for your comments. Mm -hmm. So next we have um, Jacqueline Walker. So I think there, Jackie, if you're there, I'll get you to unmute and show your video. Good morning. Can everybody hear me and see me? We can hear you, but we can't see you. Is your camera covered? There we go. There we are. <laughs> um, I did not submit a question. I was actually uh, on the call simply to gather information. Uh, I'm the property manager for Wasag Meadows, so this uh, development is of interest to us. 
um, our development division will obviously be interested to see the, the site plan and um, the detailed design and we'll put forward any questions at that time. Hi, Jackie, thank you. Um, is that the end of your submission? Yes. Oh, thank you. Okay, so we'll ask you to leave the meeting at this point and I'll move on to the next um, person. And so the next person on the list is um, Pauline and Russell Blanchard. Uh, I think it might be just Russell. Um, Russell, I'll ask you to unmute and show your video. Oh, I don't see Russell um, coming in here. I'll move on to the next person and we'll come back to Russell. Next person um, is Roseanne and Bruce. Um, and Roseanne and Bruce are joining by telephone. Oh, all right, thank you. There we go. I think uh, a lot of the questions that we had have already been asked and appreciate it's been asked already. I don't think there's anything more that we have to add at this point. Oh, thank you, Bruce. Um, so then we can end the call. Is that okay? It is. Okay, so thank we'll you. end your call and you can continue watching online if you choose. Thank, Thank you very you. much. We will do Thank that. You. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Okay, next on our list, um, I will try Russell one more time and see if he is available. Russell, are you available and can you show your video? Okay, we'll come back to Russell. Um, the next and actually, I'm not sure we have two others that have not joined the meeting um, that uh, are not here. So um, if uh, Russell cannot join at this point, um, there he is. Okay, Russell's coming in. Oh, it is. Unmute yourself. This is um, Pauline. Pauline, can you unmute yourself? We can't hear you at the moment. There we go. Uh, yeah, Russ had to uh, go out somewhere, but uh, anyway, most of the questions have been answered and uh, we just hope that the buildings are the right height and um, I think it's a good thing. And that's uh, it for me, most has been answered. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. That uh, concludes the list of individuals that have joined the meeting and asked to participate. So thank you, Pauline, I will uh, ask you to um, leave the meeting at this point and you can continue watching online. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I will now ask members of committee if they have any questions or comments with regards to the proposed development. Councillor Belanger. Thank you, Councillor Gray. Um, just from Julie, a point of clarification is uh, uh, with what's been said so far is uh, oftentimes uh, uh, getting the uh, a residential zoning and uh, getting approval for the uh, density uh, that's being suggested uh, in the presentation. Uh, if the current owner decided uh, that that enhances the value of land and they sell it to another developer, that developer could choose to uh, revise uh, th that in uh, that entire uh, subdivision, uh, like it. It's, uh, so this is until until we uh, get into more detail. Uh, this is kind of a an approval to what would be possible if the current owner uh, was planning to maintain the property and develop it himself. Is that correct? Uh, yes. So it would change the zoning uh, so that even if a different developer came in, that those zoning permissions would exist. Now, the draft plan approval would show the lot lines and whether or not they decide to uh, move through the conditions and get the subdivision uh, finalized and registered. The lots would 
be created as they are uh, shown in the draft plan submission. If that does not happen, uh, there could potentially be uh, a different developer that could come in with uh, different uh, lots, but that would that would require a, a different submission because it would be changing the draft plan subdivision significantly. So. Um, the only other piece would be um, for two years after a zoning bylaw amendment is passed that uh, no minor variances can be applied for. Uh, so, you know, whether somebody brings a request to council to ask if they could apply for minor variances, uh, that could potentially change some of the build out of the, the potential footprint of buildings. Uh, but for the most part, if the plan gets applied for and approved, uh, the final plan gets registered after fulfilling those conditions. So I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Uh, and, and just to say that over the years, there's been, uh, as it was uh, indicated by a number of residents, uh, there were a number of residents that had concerns uh, with the campground being there. Uh, and uh, through some of the replanning process, many residents have uh, talked to me about the need uh, to be downsizing from larger bungalows and uh, and hopefully when we get into the detailed planning, both uh, square footage, uh, the, the, the actual dwellings, the, uh, the apartment and condos, these are, uh, these are appropriate types of housing that are required in our community. And just my final question, and it was raised about uh, the four-story apartment changing the landscape. Um, I don't know if there's a clearance, but fr from the back of that building to uh, uh, the current residential uh, uh, that is behind the campground, about about how many meters would that be? Because it it looks like between trees and the distance uh, that that uh, that shouldn't be uh, a major eyesore. I don't believe so. But again. I know this will be covered in uh, more detailed uh, planning. Thank you. On my list is uh, Councillor Kinney. Thank you, Deputy Mayor uh, Bray. Uh, two quick comments, uh, Julie. Comment number one is, and I know there's a sentiment within our council, at least I hope there is, to keep the environment as healthy as possible, and that means trees. And I know our planners uh, are recognizing that, and I'm sure that we as a town council will try our best to keep as many trees as we can because that's where we get our oxygen from. Uh, our, my second one is, and I don't know whether or not there's any caveats in the Planning Act or not, uh, I did hear a comment from one of our uh, residents with regards to not being aware of what's, the, that, what's happening as far as meetings and that goes. And I know now that they'll probably reach out to you via email, but I'm just wondering whether or not um, and I'm not sure whether or not this is permitted, but I'll, I'll, I'll let you respond to this, Julie, whether or not um, this individual would be able to utilize your town email and post it on their social Facebook, because that's where they apparently found out information from. And that way, the best way we can get good information to our citizens is by any format. And if that's possible, I think that might help out. Uh, thank you, um, Deputy Mayor. Thanks. Did you want to respond, Julie? Uh, sure. So um, it, it could have been that some individuals didn't get notice uh, delivered to their, their mailboxes because the Park Ridge development is, uh, the, the parcel of land is under one ownership. So the individuals, um, you know, they, they have the land lease and the owner of that property is who we send notices to. So within 120 meters, we send notice to property owners. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that they live at that residence. So when that gets delivered, uh, whether they live in Wasega Beach at that address or they live somewhere else, um, that's where the notice would be delivered to. So the notice was also posted on the signs uh, on the subject land so that people in the area can see it. And it was posted in the paper. 
Um, so we do try best efforts to make sure that everybody gets uh, notice of that. But in terms of the Park Bridge development, it would be up to them uh, as a property owner to inform their uh, lease, uh, leasees uh, on site. So the, that could have been a part of the communication that didn't kind of trickle or funnel down. Um, and that same expectation would be for apartment buildings or condominium projects. Uh, the owner would get uh, the, the notice. Um, yeah, I, I don't think there is an issue with uh, posting my email. Uh, I believe my email is on the notice signs and it's, uh, it's in the notices that go in the paper. And if it's not mine, it is the general uh, planning department email. Um, I guess uh, if you know individuals are listening, the only thing that I could ask is that if um, if there's a group of individuals or a neighborhood association that they could uh, collectively submit those comments together, um, just so I don't get uh, you know 100 emails uh, stating the exact same comment. Uh, I don't think that this is necessarily uh, enforces, but if you could list the individuals that have the exact same comments and submit it collectively, I think that that would be extremely helpful uh, for myself and, and planning staff in general. Thank you, Ms. Nolan. Uh, Councillor Foster. Thank you, Madam Chair. A couple of things. Um, I found it interesting that this is the first public meeting we've had on a Zoom call. We had great participation and it, it's excellent. The one gentleman who was somewhere up on a space shuttle or something was unique. It's the first out of planet one we've had. Um, I, we might remind people that don't use virtual backgrounds in our meetings. But my the, my question for the, is actually more to Julie. Um, on one of the slides, you were suggesting there were a number of exceptions. That, uh, 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 residential type three with some exceptions. And you had a list of them on a, uh, a table there. One was including a smaller uh, lot size, the other was a smaller building, and I, it doesn't really matter. My question related to those exceptions is, are those ones um, greater than exceptions that we've done previously for other subdivisions? So I know we've done smaller buildings. I know we've done, one was the uh, proximity to a corner, and I think there's a place over here on 27th or 28th that we, we, we dealt with that. So I want to know, are these exceptions that have occurred somewhere else around the town and they're just asking us to do the same thing are these shrinking the shrinking the envelopes all the way around 1.5 meter side yard things uh so i unfortunately do not have the most incredible memory of all time so i would definitely have to do some research uh and take a look at other lots that we have approved and what would be appropriate. Uh, I, I don't know off the top of my head uh, whether or not we have approved the exact same exceptions in other places, but I think one thing to consider is that development is always unique to a specific spot. So even if we had approved uh, reduced setbacks and reduced lot sizes in one area, it might be circumstantial that it was appropriate in, in that area for that specific lot. Uh, I think that everything needs to be looked at uh, obviously holistically in terms of the surrounding neighborhood, but also individually and uniquely as uh, the parcel permits. So I definitely can look into that. Um, I know that we have uh, approved a few site specific exceptions over um, in the Haymount development, which is uh, Stonebridge, by, uh, Stonebridge by the Bay. Um, so there were some reductions in the R3 zone there, uh, but uh, I, this would all be looked at as we do a full analysis on the development and that would be taken into consideration as to what this looks like uh, are there examples in town and can we move that forward or not yeah and i'm not i'm not opposed necessarily to to granting an exception i just like to know where the precedent is so if you look at the place the townhouses over on uh, puccini drive they had they were i think the size and the width was smaller than than had been traditional I don't have a problem with changing our tradition to keep up because how people want houses is evolving over time. So we we have to be able to provide, you know, what what the market demands. And if that's you know a smaller, maybe perhaps low maintenance place, this is a perfect example of it. So, and the one thing I am I did hear, and it goes to a question that someone had brought forward, 
is I don't believe there's a request for any backyard um, shrinkage, which was the 7.5 meters, which I think is 25 feet, which is the same everywhere around town. So people are concerned that they're going to be built four feet off the back fence line. I don't believe that's the case. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, seeing no other requests to speak, I will move on. Comments received today will be considered and decisions on these applications will be made at a future meeting as to whether committee will recommend the proposed official plan and zoning bylaw amendments and draft plan of subdivision are to proceed further through the approvals process. Anyone receiving notice of the public meeting will receive notice of council's decisions on these matters. If you did not receive the notice of public meeting and you would like to receive a copy of the notice of council of decisions, please contact planning department, leave your name and address to be added to the circulation list or make a written request to the clerk of the town of Wasaga Beach. Thank you for everyone who took place in our first uh, Zoom public meeting. Thank you. I will hand the chair back to Councillor Belanger. Thank you, Councillor Bray. Uh, we're now going to move on to other agency reports, item 3.2, and I see our fire chief is waiting, so I'll turn the floor over to you, Chief. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of council. Uh, as per the fire department monthly report in your agenda, you can see that we responded to 70 calls for service in the month of May. Um, this is actually 50% less calls when you compare it to the previous four years, as you can see in the spreadsheet. Now, the stats provided in the report, this reduction of calls is primarily a result um, of a change that we made to our medical response protocol. So you can see those medicals are the, the bulk of where we've reduced the calls. And this was related to COVID-19. And as we previously explained to council, we moved to a protocol that was used during the SARS pandemic. So this was a recommendation from the paramedic services medical director. And this was to reduce unnecessary exposures for firefighters. So we ran with that protocol for a period of time. We have since moved back to our tiered response agreement, but we're only at a level B. So historically our department has been a level A response criteria and we'll continue to assess and uh, decide when it's time to move back to that, that level A. Um, just going into back to the Victoria Day long weekend, uh, generated only six calls for service. Normally on this weekend, we would see 20 to 30 calls. So this is not surprising considering the, uh, the current situation we're in and the weather and, and everything that, uh, that was on that weekend. So. Um, there were two structure fires noted in the report. Uh, both were cooking related. One was contained to the inside of an oven with no damage to the residents. Uh, the second was a stovetop fire and it was a result of an open pot of oil. Not uncommon, we've seen this many times. Uh, it ignited and then burned up the wall and onto the ceiling. This call was very close to station two. We made a very quick uh, response and a, and a quick knockdown and the fire was limited to the kitchen area. Uh, firefighters had a successful medical save a few weeks ago. Uh, this is using a combination of the naloxone drug that we carry and CPR. And this was a patient that had uh, overdosed. Um, this is another good example of why having that naloxone on our trucks um, continues to be a very positive addition to the, the tools we carry for medical responses. Uh, fire department has been called out for two separate water related incidents over the last week. Uh, both however turned out to be non-emergencies. Um, this is one area and I've talked about it before, we continue to struggle with false water related calls and we're still looking for, for solutions to avoid uh, the full response because uh, we, we call out all our staff for, for these calls and when it turns out to be unfounded and, and just you know somebody perceived it to be an emergency and it's not it's it's frustrating so we're working for solutions uh, to, to avoid that um, and then last night's windstorm generated a few calls uh, there was a power outage in the west end of town lasted for approximately an hour uh, one of the incidents involved a tree falling on a person now we were tied up at another call and uh, by the time we responded to that, uh, on our arrival, the patient had already been loaded in, in the ambulance. 
uh, and we're leaving, so we didn't really get any details, but we're gonna follow up uh, with the paramedics. I don't know how serious it was, but uh, um, we'll, we'll try and get some details. And lastly, under fire prevention activities, we were out proactively conducting uh, commercial inspections in May, primarily for accommodation businesses, which turned out to be beneficial as the province allowed these businesses to reopen last Friday. And just to note though, the inspections were done by only one firefighter and one bylaw officer and all safety measures with respect to COVID were in place to protect, uh, protect our staff as well as the public. Um, so that Mr. Chair is my report. Double. Thank you, Chief. And uh, I'll ask if there's any questions of the Chief. Yes, Councillor Kenny, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Chief, when you mentioned about the water rescue, and I'm just pulling something out of the box here, um, does the fire department have a drone? And would a drone help in assessing the urgency of a water rescue or not doing it? I'm thinking of a drone that's portable and could be on a truck that's responding and the second member's looking. And uh, I just came into my head and a lot of things come in and through my head. So that's normal and stop laughing, Chief. Uh, but <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll leave that with you. It's just your thoughts, please. And thank you, Chair. Is there any other questions of the Chief? Did you want me to respond to that, Mr. Chair? Oh, so, uh, uh, go ahead. I thought it was kind of for information, but go okay. ahead. Um, and maybe it was, Mark. I apologize if it is. Uh, we do have a drone. Um, however, we still have to make a response to bring that drone to the area where the where the incident is occurring or perceived to be occurring. Um, it, it's uh, a lot of these calls again are people that are live along the beach area and they look out and they see somebody flailing about beside a, a watercraft and they feel they're in trouble when they just jumped in to have a swim and they're going to get back in their boat. So it's stuff like that that it's very difficult to uh, to you can't just not respond as you know from your your work history and with the OPP you can't not respond. So we have to respond to these, but it's frustrating that we're not getting good details before we. Uh, before we go. Thank you, Chief. Is there any further questions? Okay, I'll uh, ask for a uh, mover and a seconder. Okay, I think we have uh, Councillor Kinney and I'm covering the face of the, I'll go with Councillor Wells, I can see his face. Oh, sorry, it was Councillor Watson. So we, so we'll read the motion as to resolve that the community service section of coordinated committee receive the May 2020 fire department report for information. All those in favor? That's carried unanimously. We'll now move to the consent agenda. And there's only one item pulled today and that's with accounts. I believe it's related to a pecuniary interest and that's item uh, 3.5.1. So I need a mover and a seconder. Okay, so that's Councillor Foster and uh, Councillor Kenny. All items listed below will be approved by one resolution. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a council member requests it, in which case the item will be removed from the consent resolution and considered immediately following the adoption of the remaining consent agenda items. All those in favor? Okay, that's carried unanimously. And let's move to item 3.5.1. Okay, anyhow, it's a, it's uh, with accounts and uh, I, I believe uh, that was uh, pulled by Councilor Bray. It was Councilor 
wasn't actually pulled it was a pecuniary interest as there's a two hundred and eighty two dollar item that uh, I have declared on okay do we need a mover or a seconder than for that being the pecuniary yes. interest Councillor Belanger I, I believe uh, Councillor Foster would like to say a word okay Councillor Foster go ahead yes thank you Mr. Chair I think the last one we did, the consent agenda, you read the preamble, the resolution 3.3.1, um, that's not what you read into the into the meeting. You read the, the preamble to it. So I just wondered if that's acceptable. Right, 3.3.1, as opposed to the, all the above, all the items listed below will be approved by one resolution. I think that's what you read and we voted on not resolved that the community service section of coordinated committee receive. It's maybe the clerk can justify that or verify that. I, I believe I said all items except 3.5.1 and then read the consent agenda. Um, sorry, Councillor Foster and Belanger. Um, I'm not so sure that you read resolve that. Um, if we would like to redo that motion I'm more than happy to read it for you or you can certainly read that portion well I think I did read that but I can okay. read it again uh, it's resolved that the community service section of coordinated committee received the May 2020 oh sorry I'm the mover and <laughs> seconder <laughs> Councillor Belanger yeah well uh, there was I, a mover and seconder to that we we did have it uh, I believe it was uh, Councillor Kenny and Councillor Wells but I'm not positive so moved by Councillor Winnie Kinney and seconded by Councillor Wells. Okay, and resolved that the Community Service Section of Coordinating Committee hereby received the June 11, 2020 Consent Agenda, items 3.4 through 3.7, and that all the recommendations contained therein be accepted, excluding agenda items pulled from the motion and voted on separately. And that is Although item 3.5.1. That's correct. correct. All those in favor? Carried unanimously. I apologize if I misheard. So I didn't hear that, Councillor Foster. I was just apologizing in case I, I misheard it. So I, I, I could have messed up too, so don't, don't worry about it. We got it covered now. So uh so 3.5.1 uh, was just approved related to the pecuniary interest. I don't, I don't think we had a motion or seconder to that. So that was covered earlier, Dina. We do need a mover and a seconder and, and uh, Deputy Mayor Bray has declared and will not be participating in this. Okay, we have Councillor Watson and Mayor Bifolci. And resolved that the Departmental accounts for March 1st to May 31st, 2020, as reviewed by the Community Service Section of Coordinated Committee, are hereby confirmed. All those in favor? And that's uh, carried by a vote of six to zero. And uh, I'll, I'll ask, uh, are we taking a brief intermission or are we moving uh, directly to uh, Public Works? Councillor Foster would like to uh, say a word. Um, I'm happy to move forward. It is up to council if they wish to take a break or if they, you want to continue on. It wasn't to have a word. It was just to say, can we take five minutes? We certainly okay. can. So we will adjourn for five minutes and we will reconvene at uh, 1036.
you guys are. We need Stan and George back. There we go. We're online now. I'm getting a message that says I cannot start video because the host has terminated my video. Oh, my apologies, Stan. I don't think I have, but let me see if I can find you and fix that. We're good to go. I will um, reconvene the meeting. We'll deal with the public works section of the coordinated committee. Um, before I start anything, I think it's uh, appropriate that we uh, acknowledge the uh, passing of Bob Ackley. He was a 30-year um, veteran with the town, and he, he retired about a year ago, and he passed away this last week. So it's um, it's a loss, of course, for his family and friends, but his, he had a town family as well. Um, I know that they're all uh, hurting on that, so I just wanted to uh, acknowledge that. Moving on, we will uh, go to deputations, presentations, petitions, and public meetings, which we have none scheduled today. Um, we have no other agency reports. The consent agenda, Two items have been pulled, uh, w both related to um, uh, pecuniary interest or possible pecuniary interest. 4.4.3, the Northgate Road Reconstruction Report, and that was uh, mentioned by Councillor Kinney and uh, Mayor Bray, or <laughs> Mayor Bray. <laughs> it starts with a B, Mayor by Fulci. <laughs> um, and then also on 4.5.1, departmental accounts, uh, Mayor Bifulci had also pointed that out. My apologies. So if there's nothing else to be pulled from the consent agenda, I'll read the thing, look for a mover and seconder, and then uh, I'll call the vote. So it's resolved that the public works section of the coordinated committee hereby receives the June 11th, 2020 consent agenda items 4.4.1 through 4.7.4 and that all the recommendations contained therein be adopted, excluding agenda items pulled from the motion and to be voted on separately. So that's the one. I'm gonna ask for a mover and seconder. I got Councillor Watson and Councillor Belanger, and I'll call all those in favor. And that is carried unanimously, thank you. Items 4.4.3, this one was the Northgate Road reconstruction. Uh, both Councillor uh, Kinney and the Mayor have pulled away from the table. And uh, I'll ask for, well, I'll read it, ask for a mover and seconder, and then we'll take the vote. Uh, so this is Northgate Road reconstruction contract number PW 2019-25 tender award recommendation. It resolved that the public works section of the coordinated committee does hereby recommend to council that the Northgate Road reconstruction contract number PW 2019-25 be awarded to Leading Edge Earthworks in the amount of $342,102.45, which excludes HST, and further that the mayor and clerk be authorized to execute the agreement for the works, for these works. And um, I'll ask for a mover and seconder. Please, Councillor Belanger and Deputy Mayor Bray, any conversation required on this? Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? That's carried by a vote of five, zero, with two people having declared. I'll welcome back Councillor Kinney to the table, and we'll go down to 4.5.1. Bear with me, which is the departmental accounts. Again, the mayor is away from the table at this moment. Uh, resolve that the March 1st to May 31st, 2020 accounts, as reviewed by the public works section of the coordinated committee, are hereby confirmed. 
I'll ask for a mover and seconder. Councillor Gray, Councillor Watson. All those in favor, please. That's carried at six to zero with the mayor being away from the table. She's back. Um, and I think technically that covers the entire public works section. Um, unless there's anything that anyone needs added. If not, I will pass the chair over to who's next? Sylvia, I think, with the development services section. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Foster. I just have to flip the head on my agenda. Okay. So we're going to start with the development services section of community of sorry of coordinated committee. Uh, deputations, presentations, petitions, and public meetings. We had the public meeting on Sunshine Village, 646 River Road West at nine o'clock this morning. Unfinished business, there's a list of items. If there's no questions, we'll move on to other agency reports of which we have none. And then we have a consent agenda. If I could just ask the deputy clerk if anything had been pulled, I did not copy the notes from one version to the other. Has anything been pulled from de, uh, this section? Deputy Mayor uh, Ray, we don't see anything being pulled at this point. Wonderful. Well, seeing none, all items listed below will be approved by one resolution. There will be no separate discussion of these items as nothing has been um, pulled. So resolve that the development services section of coordinated committee hereby receives the June 11th, 2020 consent agenda items 5.4 through to 5.7 and that all the recommendations contained therein be adopted ex um, excluding nothing as nothing was pulled. Could I have a mover for this motion? Councillor Kinney and a seconder, Councillor Watson. All in favor? That carries unanimously. And that um, concludes the development services section of coordinated committee. Thank you. I think that was a record. <laughs> I'm going to hand this over to Councillor Watson in general government. I believe you mean Councillor Wells? Here's Councillor Watson here speaking. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at Stan as I spoke uh, <laughs> George's name. <laughs> Councillor Wells. <laughs> Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, general Government section. Uh, the uh, first item on our agenda is a deputation uh, with respect to a purchase of land of a town right away adjacent to 91 Old Mosley Street. And Mr. Uh, Casimiri and Ms. Cas uh, Ms. Uh, Casimiri are uh, uh, going to uh, make a, a brief presentation. Um, to uh, about requesting a property purchase. So, um, Madam Clerk, have we got, uh, there we go, there. there. Welcome, uh, Marco and Christine, to our meeting. Are you hearing us? We yes, can hear you. Great, and we're hearing you as well. So I would just remind you that our presentations have a time limit of about 10 minutes. So if you could uh, begin, we'd be happy to hear your presentation. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Mayor Bifulci and Council for hearing us today. Uh, I will try and do a presentation right now. Let's see if I can do this. Do, 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 share screen. And let's see. Is everybody able to see my screen? Yes. All right. Um, so just to go through this real quickly, um, there's a, a, a laneway that's beside 91 Old Mosley, which is our, our property. Um, it's, um, I'll, I'll just go through the, the entire thing right now. So um, there's, there's a bit of history there. We've been part of the community since 1974. Uh, in 1983, my father, who uh, purchased the property in 1975, uh, approached the city and um, basically was given uh, the ability to purchase the land for 14,000. He, um, he was in the process of doing it, but due to family matters, couldn't complete the, the purchase. So the, the 
lane weight went back to the city and it never changed hands, but it um, remained town property. Um, so that's that's where that stand, stood there. Um, in the late 80s, um, a uh, storm sewer went in. So the it used to be a boat launch area. Uh, that's what the laneway used to be. Then when the sewer went, or the storm sewer went in, it was uh, uh, brake walls installed and posts were put in place, basically preventing anyone from gaining access to launch any watercraft to the, uh, to the river. Over the years though, what, what, we've, what we've seen is it, it's, it's become more overgrown and um, it's been a little more, um, not not clean like if we look at the the first slide where there there's the actual posts that were put in place uh behind the those posts uh, there's been a lot of brush a lot of uh garbage uh the, the people leave things there um on the other side of the posts uh ahead of us um if i move further down um oh i went too far sorry so it, we've we've pretty much uh, I cleaned the area that's before the post, so it's uh, it's clean. But after the post, you can see it's kind of dirty, and it's really like an eyesore to look at. Um, what's what's happened over the years now? What what we see now is where the break wall was installed and everything. Uh, the land is sort of washed away uh, on either side, and it's it's kind of a hazard uh, if if anybody goes over there. You trip, you're going to land in in the break wall and so on. So it's just something that hasn't been maintained, and we, we wanted to change that. So what we wanted to do, our proposal is is for the township to to allow us to buy uh, that part of the laneway. Um, we we realize that there is a storm sewer that's there. So when when issue or one uh, thing that we'd like to put in there would be an easement clause uh, that way if if we were allowed to buy the land and merge it into 91 of Mosley and it'd be one parcel of land uh, the city would still have the right of way um, uh, because of the storm sewer and so on uh, that, yeah yeah you'd still have the access okay. and and uh, you would you would actually be not liable or responsible for any of that because we would be looking after the land and, and bringing it back to normal and maintaining it. Um, that's basically it for the presentation that we had. Uh, we're just hoping that you guys, uh, that council would give us the ability to purchase the land. Uh, thank you uh, for the presentation, Marco and Christine. Um, I'm going to uh, ask uh, if uh, Public Works Director Kevin Lalonde. If uh, Kevin, are you, are you with us? Do you have, because it is a, a storm water management uh, mm -hmm. uh, right away, um, just wondering if you have any comments, Kevin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, certainly, uh, this, this request came forward, I believe, last year. And as with pretty much every request for um, consideration of purchase uh, municipal road allowance leading to uh, a water body whether it be the bay or the river um, it has been our practice and certainly my practice for the last 10 years to to strongly discourage that sale um, as the owners have indicated uh, it is uh, uh, it does provide outlet to an existing storm sewer and this is an already very narrow road allowance and it is an un unopened and unimproved road allowance so uh, the level of service provided to this uh, small laneway is, is not atypical and it's consistent with other such laneways. Um, we have noted the, um, sorry, uh, we have noted the, uh, the undermining of the retaining wall and we'll create a work order to address that. But um, as some of you, of you may recall, we did advance the, uh, the urbanization and storm uh, drainage improvements along Old Mosley Street several years ago. Uh, which identified not only the upsizing of this storm sewer outlet when we do urbanize Old Molesley Street, but also uh, the requirement and identification for a stormwater quality structure. And with the narrow road allowance being only 30 feet, 
the quality structure that we have designed for this area, which is effectively kind of an oil grit separator, as you know, uh, is upwards of 15 feet by 10 feet wide. And, and so, uh, again, back to um, discouraging any municipal uh, public access to waterfront is, is first and foremost our position, but recognizing also that the infrastructure that exists and what is proposed, uh, we believe that this should remain within uh, municipal ownership rather than the easement. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I'll, I'll just comment, Marco and Christine. Uh, I think we're going to read a motion. We're going to actually refer this back to staff for further comment. Uh, or at least, if there's a, if that motion is accepted, that's what will happen. Uh, I would just like to, on my own behalf, comment that uh, over the uh, number of years that I have sat on councils uh, of the town. It, it has been basically the practice, uh, not to say that it can't be changed, but it has been the practice that any uh, right of way or road allowance that leads uh, from the uh, adjacent roads to the water either of the river or of the bay, um, we've had a number of these up in the tiny township area as well, uh, not tiny township, but the, the sorry, the Allenwood Beach area. Uh, where it has just generally been common practice that uh, it has not been approved to sell those uh, right-of-ways or easements uh, off because it does provide access to local residents who may wish to make their way down to the water. Um, so I'm just sharing that, uh, you know, so that uh, not uh, not sitting back and, and uh, not saying anything whatsoever. So, uh, but I will, uh, I will listen to anyone else who wishes to comment at this point. And I'm seeing no other comments coming forward. So Marco, Christine, what I'm going to do is read a motion uh, and ask for a mover and a seconder for that motion. Um, and then we'll vote uh, again. I want to thank you for your presentation. Oh, I did have one question. In looking at the pictures, uh, it appears, is it, a, is it a shed or a boathouse that appears to be down towards the water's edge? Is that a structure that I noticed? Yes, uh, on, on, on our side, yes, there's a shed there. Okay, and and I'm not looking to complicate the issue, but is that shed uh, encroaching onto the municipal property at this time? I'm not sure. I I, I may believe so. I, I don't know. We just recently took over the property from my father, who is in his 90s now and can't look after it anymore, so he right. gave it to us. So that's why we're now trying to clean it up and make everything presentable okay understood and that potentially that could be a bit of an issue as well but uh, we'll deal with that as we go forward um, and a question to Kevin if he's still with us um, Kevin I realize that we don't maintain or, or uh, uh, provide maintenance to a lot of these properties but is would it be possible to have staff you know even once a year or twice a year spring or fall uh, just go in and, and uh, clean up that debris and that um, that material just to provide a more aesthetic uh, town property adjacent to Casimiri's? Um, we, we take that under consideration, Councillor. Certainly there's many unopened and unimproved road allowances across the shoreline and the beachfront. Um, so as much as I'd like to say yes, absolutely, uh, there's certainly resource allocations and challenges associated with that, but uh, definitely, you know, we are uh, very responsive to these types of erosion issues and, and certainly tree issues. So um, we'll take that into consideration, but uh, without appropriate resources, certainly it, it is a challenge. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, I see Mark Kinney wishing to make a comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you to Marco and Christine for coming to council and addressing your concerns and I too are in the middle of working on family property that's been, well, not maintained as much. And I give you kudos for trying your best to improve it. Um, and I want you to keep on working with the town because uh, I think we can, we, can, we can do what we can to help, uh, keeping in mind that uh, the previous conversations that we've had with our director of public works and our chair today, um, but again, I want to thank you for reaching out to town council. Thank you. 
Thank you. Officer Watson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, to um, through to Kevin. Kevin is uh, if if any property owner, but we're talking about this one specifically, wishes to go and, and clean up themselves these row lounges just to make their own property look a little better or cut the grass or pick up garbage. Is, is that a permissible thing for most people to do if they so choose to do? Thank you. Uh, thank you through you, Mr. Chair. Certainly, and, and that's certainly what happens now with, with many of them along uh, the river's edge and shoreline, as well as even the municipal boulevards for individual uh, property owners. So uh, we wouldn't discourage that. Uh, Councillor Foster. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There's nothing wrong with a little sweat equity there. However, when we saw those pictures on the Casimiri's um, presentation, the, the end where the uh, storm sewer lays out had big holes on both sides, left and right. That's not, shouldn't be the energy or cost to the uh, Casimiri's to deal with that. That's a significant thing that probably requires engineering behind it. So uh, the town does have to, you know, have to do something to make it safe, if, you know, because you could, it could lead to an ultimate uh, breakdown of the infrastructure itself. So. Yeah, and I think there's potentially liability issue there as well, but who, that's not my place to say. Yeah, absolutely, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to uh, Councillor Foster. Uh, as indicated, we have created a work order to address that issue, and uh, certainly with the high water levels along the river, we've had a number of retaining walls and similar outlets that have been undermined uh, uh, in, in a similar fashion to this, and, and we continue to address those issues. But yeah, that, that definitely would not be the responsibility of the landowner and, or the adjacent landowner, and, and we'll, we'll address that uh, in due course. Thank you, Kevin. I see no other requests to speak, so I will read a motion and ask for uh, a mover and a seconder. It is uh, resolved that general government section of coordinated committee receive the presentation by Mr. Uh, Marco Casimiri and Ms. Christine Casimiri uh, request with respect to the property adjacent to 91 Old Mosley Street and that we refer the request back to staff for further review and information. Looking for a mover and seconder. I have Councillor Kinney and Mayor Bifolci. All in favor? And that motion is passed unanimously. So Marco, Christine, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank and you. we will, whatever the outcome is, we'll try to work with you to uh, at least be good neighbors on, on the property at the very least. Thank you thank so you. much for having us. Thank you. Okay, uh, with that, we have, uh, we're moving, there's no other agency reports. We're going to move to the consent agenda. Uh, however, I have a note that uh, Councillor Watson has a comment to make prior to the consent agenda. So Councillor Watson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It was, it was just on item uh, 6.5.2, the uh, archives um, movement over to 140 uh, uh, Main Street. Um, uh, myself and some other councillors over the years have been keen on getting the archives uh, moved and uh, we're seeing it happening now for the reasons explained in the report. Um, the price paid for this property and the expropriation proceedings by the previous council were both inappropriate, but this is a reasonable result and it uh, frees up space in our library and puts the archives in a good position. So thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councillor Watson, and I can only echo your comments. This is something that uh, ever since I got back on council for, I have uh, from the last uh, election, I've been uh, uh, pushing uh, from sort of the side to see this happen. So I'm pleased to see this motion on the agenda. I'm going to move then to reading the uh, resolution with respect to the consent agenda. I will note that section uh, item 6.5.1 the CAO's report with respect to an independent solicitor has been pulled by Councillor Belanger. 
and so I'll then move forward on the understanding that that would be voted on separately. So moving forward, it is resolved that general, oh, yeah, resolved that general government section of coordinated committee hereby receives the June 11th, 2020 consent agenda, item 6.4 through 6.7, and that the recommendations contained therein be adopted, excluding agenda items pulled from the motion and voted on separately. Need a mover and a seconder. Uh, moved by Deputy Mayor Bray, seconded by Councillor Watson. All in favor? And Councillor Foster? Okay, sorry, I couldn't see it. All of this, uh, it's been adopted unanimously. Thank you. I need more coffee. Uh, so we're moving then to item 6.5.1. I will read the motion and look for a mover and seconder, and then uh, I will uh, open the floor. So 6.5.1, it is the CAO's report dated June 11th, 2020, reappointment of an independent solicitor to the assessment committee established under council's indemnification policy. It is resolved that general government section of coordinated committee received the report from the chief administrative officer pertaining to the appointment of David A. Potts, LLB, LLM, to sit on the assessment committee established under council's indemnification policy. I need a mover and a seconder. Councillor Watson, Councillor Kinney, and Councillor Belanger, you asked to have it pulled, so I'll turn it to you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Wells. Uh, it's uh, pretty well known that uh, I was uh, opposed to the changes of the addition of a defamation policy where potentially we would use taxpayers' money to uh, take legal action against taxpayers. But further to that, I have serious concerns as to calling a single solicitor paid by the town and the CAO is an independent committee. Uh, I, I believe that this is not uh, nearly robust enough uh, we have uh, retired uh, judges in our community. Uh, there's, there's other options that I think should uh, be seriously considered. As I said on, at the upfront, I'd prefer that we're not dealing with this at all. Uh, but uh, I, I think we're uh, kidding ourselves if we believe that this is an independent committee and I will be opposing. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Vettemancourt, do you wish to make any comment before we move to the vote? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, for the opportunity. No, I don't have any comments to, to respond to that comment. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Watson to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's just maybe of interest to uh, the public that uh, just recently in the Toronto Star and I did circulate the article to all of council seems to be coming a trend with municipalities of bringing in a policy such as this and the best example of it I guess is the city, uh, the town of Vaughan or the city of Vaughan I guess they call it now just brought one in and it's actually far more uh, generous and open than the one that we've brought in so it's, uh, we're not standing alone and it's uh, going forward this way due to the environment that uh, we all work in nowadays. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Bray. Uh, thank you, Councillor Watson. I certainly uh, agree with the comments that you made. I think, you know, if, if it's leading edge, it's good to see the city of uh, Vaughan is, is closely following on our heels in this regard. I think it's necessary, unfortunately, with the current environment. Um, if, if things aren't brought back into some type of control, maybe through an indemnification policy, you will see people stop running for council because a million, no, a million, many people ask, you know, why do we do it? When they read the abuse that a lot of us put up with online, we do get that question. And I think if you want a, a certain caliber of, of elected officials, there has to be some protection for them and for their families. So um, I know this report is talking about the lawyer, David Potts. I have had the opportunity to speak with him in the past. I've read articles that he's written. I don't think uh, our CAO could have found anyone more qualified in um, libel and, and all, particularly with municipal um, slant. I think he's kind of state of the art and one of the, the leading experts in that field. 
And I think we're very fortunate that though it may be a small assessment team, I think it's a very, very well-qualified assessment team. So I am certainly supporting this motion. Thank you. Councilor Foster. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, two points. One, this isn't designed just to cover council. We are compensated to a certain amount to do our job, but there's people who sit on advisory committees to council that give nothing but their time and are opening themselves up to the similar, potentially similar challenges that we have. So I'm in support of that in both for a council, but also for those independent committee or our subcommittees, if you will. The other part that I take a little bit of exception to is, is to suggest that a professional lawyer would, would somehow, because of his, his paycheck, be biased. He has to report, you know, there are ethics committees and all that kind of stuff, plus an integrity commissioner to deal with all of this. So to imply that somehow we can buy, you know, a view in favor or opposed to someone, um, I think is, is not, it's disingenuous to the, to the report. So uh, I am in support of it as it's written. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any other comments? Uh, I just want to thank Councillor Foster for the for those comments. But you echo what I was going to say too about uh, the integrity of individuals, and to I think uh, it uh, we have to uh, uh, rely on integrity and uh, and also the fact that these people are in a position of uh, trust uh, in many ways, and uh, we have to recognize that. Having said that, I've already read the motion. I had a mover and a seconder. I'm going to ask to call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried on a vote of six to one with Councillor Boulanger in opposition. I believe that completes the agenda for uh, through the General Government Committee and through to the end of the, the meeting of a coordinated committee. So we now We'll be moving to a special council meeting starting at, uh, well, it started nine minutes ago. I guess we just weren't there. Uh, but uh, we do have a special council meeting that will be starting just a few minutes late. I'm going to ask that we take a 15 minute break to allow for the uh, carryover from one meeting into the next. And so it's now 11.09, uh, Madam Clerk, if we start the meeting at 11.20, does that work for you? Thank you, Councillor Wells. Um, we do have a little bit of a technology um, glitch with regards to our um, tiles that we're putting up. So may I ask that we start the meeting at 1130? Just uh, to ensure that can we I have... See, can I just see nods of acceptance for 1130? Fine, uh, Madam Clerk, uh, Dina, yes, 1130. We'll hopefully restart. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we are adjourned as coordinated committee.